Hello and welcome to Odin Warrior, or even Odin Warrior as its uh, as its variant is. So essentially, the deck is a control deck. What it is based around is essentially Odin Prime Designate, which is this card right here. All you want to do is essentially get to this card, put it down on the field, and then gain a bunch of armor, attack your opponent's face, and just obliterate them. The goal, uh, the tools we have to do this are obviously things like Minefield, as well as Bladestorm and Bash, but also the overpowered and amazing Frozen Buckler into Shield Shatter combo, being able to destroy a board pretty quickly. We can then follow this up in the mid game with Trial of Fire, which is just a generally really good card. We have some big bang hits at the end of the game with Captain Galavar, as well as potential uh, any armor gain cards like Dry Whisker Armor, after we have played our Omen. Uh, Odin to be able to deal a bunch of damage uh, and as well because we are playing a control deck we do have an ETC basically you know being able to destroy a strong minion steal King's Bane and get a bunch of damage most of the time you're going to go for Rakara uh, and yeah uh, we have Theotar and Dirty Rats to hopefully be able to beat any combo deck but let's get into the games and see how we perform ooh we're going against who, who I was just as um, so this will be interesting so we get a coin every single time we end the turn with unspent mana. Fair enough, fair enough. I'll leave no trace of this. Um, so we are teching for uh, a early start by then. So I think Craftsman Hammer is still really good because it's a weapon. It's still basically removal. Uh, so I think the rest of it is just what we need to really look out for. Awesome to have a uh, golden gen because obviously I made that golden uh, secret hunter deck. Good to know, actually. We now know that they drew patches. Hero power uh, for I think even is like the more fun variant. Odd is just way better. Uh, no, not odd. Uh, just like normal. Um, at this point, I think we just minefield it. Just, uh, get some value from killing that. Because they, if they want to swordfish this turn, uh, we can, uh, just hero power into stone skin. And that's really good for us. And then on the crackback, we can actually do a lot as well. So, this is actually really good for us. Dirty Rat, really good. Blade Storm, really good. Um, so with our 2-2 two -two on board, we should be able to contest any board that they bring out. Because uh, we basically have 7 damage on board. Uh, actually, technically more so, we have way more because of Bash as well. Okay, so that is 6 damage phase, that's fine. When you're playing a control deck that bases around like armor, uh, you don't really don't need to worry about face damage as much, which is really nice. Okay, okay. So, gonna concede now? <laughs> Maybe not, but... I would think it would. I think personally, for comedic timing it would be really funny if they did. Ah, oh, no, they top decked the perfect card. Let's see if it can actually buy them what they need. All they need, honestly, I would not have attacked. Oh, they're playing kind of like the older variant. I'm not like judging them for that, but I you don't run like this card anymore, at least in the variants that I see. Technically wrong order. Okay. Um, uh, five left, so there's no way that we can easily cheat that out. But uh, we should just be able to dirty rat, clean up what they do, and then just win from there. Kind of unlikely for them to be able to do too much now. I stand corrected.
This is, it's weird with Cutlass Courier, like you can kind of do well. Uh, the version of the deck that I have is like really deep, like it's like hyper aggro, like it's like full on, like if you can beat me early, I'm probably going to lose. Um, kind of thing. Let's just see if we can... Nothing interesting. Okay. The good thing is as well is that was all true armor. So it wasn't like frozen buckler or anything. They can obviously kill our 2-1 very easily. But at this point like... I have 30 health again. And we're approaching the point of the game. Like they've run out of a lot of fuel. They've run out of one free 2-2. Two -two. They've run out of their 1-1. One -one. Uh, they have one weapon left in deck. I think it's pretty much just controlled out for them. They're obviously going to play that. We'll just Captain Galavar to face. And the good thing is, is our uh, b uh, pressing the button for us is actually like really good. Like we're not getting and like the anomaly isn't doing anything for us, but it's really not doing much for the opponent either. Man, the Garona artwork is so nice. Puffer Fist, I don't think I've ever really used. Like it's good, obviously, but like I feel like I've just never used it. Let's see what you have in your hand. Oh, literally just the coin. Okay. That's funny. Do I even think I have a weapon in my hand? I'll take an extra health. It's it's fun to look at their hand, but it's funny that they literally only had coins. They're like, if I have money, maybe I'll be able to win. But sadly, Bobby ain't in here anymore. So he can't help you anymore. I do like the good sportsman uh, ship from R here. Just like full on being like, yeah, I may lose, but you know, I'm still going to let you get your victory. That's very respectable. Very respectable. Well, I guess um, that kind of shows a bit of it. Uh, but we didn't really get to uh, play o uh, Odin. But let's get into the next game. We are against Survivor, which is another rogue player playing Corona. There is a simplicity in inevitability. I think for this one we'll keep trial by fire, but we'll remove everything else. <laughs> Here come. We did get shield block. The problem here is right is if we coin for the shield block, we can't like turn two. We have nothing. They drew patches. I do want to make a odd rogue deck uh, as well. Uh, so I'm probably going to spend a bit of uh, life on getting Baku gold. I like getting cards like that gold. Like the really like crazy ones golden. Okay, we're going to hit this. We're going to draw two. Do you have this in a bigger size? trying to get good control cards like we just got the next weapon that they if they equip a weapon though and it's the uh sword f sword fish uh that's like a six attack weapon but they're not opening the absolute crazies so um yeah that's fine we still clear this That's another reason why I like Minefield over the uh, other one, is because 
we wouldn't have been able to clear that board there. Because uh, it deals three to one and then has to deal two to the ones next to it. I think it's like man the cannons or something. Sadly, doesn't get the uh, plus two extra attack. Hey, a man of culture. Have that golden too. Uh, all we're trying to do here is survive until turn six. That's all we're trying to do. Because if we can survive until turn six, trial by fire should just be able to clean. Uh, Blade Storm should also be able to deal with a lot. That's annoying. Uh, depending on how many minions they summon, we could get a good amount of armor as well. Blood and if they summon another one, we can clear. Awesome. Okay, the game is pretty much over for them at this point. Game pretty much set match now. We can Gulliver or Trial of Fire, two really powerful six costs. And from there we've basically controlled the game. I should really open United in Stormwind packs because um, almost uh, like all of the quest lines are really good. Yeah, I'll just uh, Gulliver and hit that. Oh, actually, no. Trial by fire. And uh, the crazier thing is, is I can trade one in, summon another bunch, and then just f like be like, what? It, what then? Like, I can 1, 2 into 3, and then have like a crazy good field of them. And that's one thing that I don't think people, like, that's another reason why I love using them. Uh, is because you can get crazy shit like this, where it's like, literally, game set match. I love Trial by Fire, it's such a fun card. Just looking at the board, just like, I'm fucked, aren't I? Well, take my frenzied Felwing. Will they be a good sport? They will. I'll just finish them. There's no reason to be annoying. But yeah, a vet, a vet, especially against, like, these type of aggro decks, yeah, you're probably going to be fucking winning. But yeah, on to the next game. We are against a priest. So this actually really changes things, because, uh... Although, yes, we could be going against, um... Aggro, we could not be as well. We do want to kind of keep Odin. He's particularly good. Um, if it is Aggro, Frozen Buckler is just... If we can get Shield Shatter, that's just GG. Um, the cat from uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, obviously. Now, I wanted to play so much Call of Duty uh, for my massive recording session, but literally every single time I've played a single map, I've just gotten, like, two hit. <laughs> it's probably because I'm playing maps that are annoying. It was either that or, like, uh, I had this really crazy glitch on Die Rise, where essentially on Die Rise there are these enemies that jump around on things. And what happened is I took an elevator and they spawned in the elevator and then got stuck. Um, so I literally had like nothing for like the entire game. Like there was just n like no one. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay. The other reason, by the way, uh, the other reason why I want to get all the United, I want to get the United and Stormwind cards. Because I want to specifically get him Diamond. Archbishop Benedictus Diamond. Um, because I like Shadow Priest, yes, like yes. Pirate Shadow Priest, not boring Shadow Priest. 
We have Theotar. That's amazing. The thing I hate about Priest uh, in this environment is they're all the same. Like, there's nothing about, like, a priest, like, going against one that's like, oh, I'm gonna have fun. And, like, yeah, like, oh, man, look what we're doing. We're just fucking spamming the button every turn, but it's also because we have a bad hand. Um, funnily enough, if we did have, uh, uh, whatever the other one is, we could, uh, turn eight to turn nine. Win the game. That's an interesting card to run. Ow. Hmm. How do I want to play this? If I can control the board with something, I should just do it. The time has come. Whoa! Where the fall? Wait, that's me! I don't look very handsome in that one, though. Like, my Renathal portrait is kind of like, oh, <laughs> Renathal. But that Renathal is like, oh, Renathal. Kind of stinky. What does that bring back for him? Audio amplifier, which does nothing, and then discover a card from the past, which kind of does something. Surely they're playing like a, uh... Yeah, they're probably playing some weird control deck. I'm just gonna do this now. Uh, and just get, uh, Rokawa. Not to just immediately do Rokawa, just to have her go into Odin, be able to Rokawa, hit face, and then just double Frozen Buckler for game. Hopefully. This doesn't seem like it's not Res Priest, so honestly, I'm just happy about that, to be frank. It is very interesting to see how, like, Priest can just, like, completely, like, not play the game with their cards if they want to. I guess that's fine. I don't really see us needing that, but we might, but... Okay. Next turn's turn six. That's good. We want to rip that 5-5 five five out of his hand. That's really good. Because that is for sure part of his strategy. Deal with that. So, being able to get rid of that, they've already, if they are playing Singleton, we already got rid of their Raised Dead, which obviously they can discover more, but that's really good. Um, they're probably playing some sort of deck that has a big combo. Uh, so getting rid of Gahoon is really good. Also, like, yes, it's on the field, but I don't care. Um, also, it's fucking fantastic for us. Um, in other ways, too. Not doing the health. Interesting. My question is... Is do we just go face? I think honestly we just go for the aggressiveness. Because uh, in this position, if they don't do anything, we can double Frozen Buckler for game. We can also use Dry Whisker to gain a bunch of armor too. Obviously they'll trade the 8-4 into our 4-8-8 uh, most likely. But um, even then we still get 4 armor for two mana, and they probably will want to commit more things to the board, maybe even the, yeah, Astalor. Um, so yeah, that's just GG. 
Unless. Okay. That literally just saved them. One, two, three. Going to four. Put those fours into that, because we don't have to deal with it. You're on ten. I do like corrupt cards a lot, so it would be actually kind of cool if they were playing like a corrupt priest. But if they were playing clown priest, that would be beyond annoying. Okay, okay. Does not save you though. Very interesting what this person's playing. It's actually kind of cool. I dig it. Just a shame that I win. Well played. You were you were a fun opponent. You were a fun priest, and I can't say that often. Okay, on to the next game. A shaman. Interesting. An inevitability. I feel like his entire hand is good. One, two, three, six. But this is like really good when we get it off. Yeah, even versus even. Like I know for sure that it's gonna be like a fucking. It has to be like a shaman deck, right? Like it's shaman. It's probably gonna be totem shaman. I'm very, I'm very excited to uh, do decks like that. Um, I think it's really fun. Like it's just fun having options. But at the same time, like, I have a lot of options. I have three rogue decks, two priest decks that are both aggressive decks that... Well, one's a mid-range deck and one's a, an aggressive deck. I have the Secret Shaman, I have the Terrible Corpse deck, and then I have this deck. Like, I have a bit of options. Hmm, that's actually genuinely good to get out. Genuinely good to get out, rather. Jam session, huh? Mm. Of course they do. Do I want to take the risk? No. Yeah. Not worth it. But yeah, one thing I will say is it do if you want to do wild and you want to succeed, uh, I would honestly, you're going to spend some money. Let's be honest. You're going to be spending some money. I would, at this point, like right now, like literally this second, I would buy the three decks um, and then buy another thing that's basically the same. Um, it's actually really good for us that they're doing this. Less... Uh, that's going to get healed to full, so no, it's actually fine. This is great, and the reason why this is great is because um, they all have four health, so we can just fuck them. And then we can fuck that. Um, Weapon-wise, they don't really have anything interesting. They do kind of have some big minions, um, so that could be bad, but I think overall probably going to be fine. I think this time we get uh, 7 cost again. Yeah, I think this, I think ETC like is just the perfect play here. Uh, and then we'll just, we could do this for potential steelies, but um, I don't think it's worth it. So, if they do get, like, you know, some totem attack, I will try by fire. Otherwise, I can just get Grim in. I will say, so as I was going to say before, if you really care about being cool, 
anything that says start of game that you want to run, uh, which by the way, if you want to play wild, 4,000% the first things you should craft is Gen, and you should craft fucking Baku. Because that immediately opens you to a bunch of different decks. That's great, baby. Gain some armor. Let's see what they have in their hand. Hmm. We'll kill that. It is most likely that they're going to hit into this with this, and then we can just that. We could have actually smothering just then. Hmm. They don't get torn or healing. We're actually in a good position. Will they just do that? Yeah, no. Um, at this point, we're just gonna try by fire. Really, no reason not to. This into this into that into that. Now they're playing on the complete back foot, and we have the advantage. They can summon uh, a 5-5 five five taunt. There we go, which we can just kill with this. Then we can kill that with that. And uh, yeah, that should be GG. That should just be GG, you should just concede to that point. Flame Tongue Totem. Okay. Well played, well played. Yet again, it's an aggressive strategy, so we are favored to win. Man, we just killed bread. Breakfast has lost. But we have been victorious. So let's go on to the next game, shall we? Well, we have another rogue, and that's pretty fun for us. Do they buff? Not really. I think Bash is the only thing we take here. Because if they ship's cannon, we can just kill the ship's cannon, and that's really nice. Um, most likely, turn one, do nothing, but hero power. Turn two, hopefully we had a stone skin, but probably not. Never bring a sword to a fish fight. Minefield would be very good. I am thinking about blade storming here. I think I will actually. It looks bad, but being able to stop a momentum early for these decks is really powerful. So if they ship's cannon now and we kill the ship's cannon that's just like cr like look how much momentum like they they don't have anything follow up so the fact that we were able to slow down their strategy so much is invaluable for us there's the minefield um just get it out we don't need the mana thirst right now, and it seems like later on we probably won't be using it either for the mana thirst. Astalor is a perfect example of a card that's probably always going to be good. Just the fact that it's one card that's actually three cards, even for a singleton deck, it's really good. That's what I wanted to see.
All we need to do is control the board, and we should be fine. We do have another blade storm. I'm gonna have to craft. Like the thing I do hate about uh, decks like this is sometimes you don't understand how much something actually costs. Blood and plunder. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think we've basically won now. One thing that is cool is Odin is actually here on the Trial by Fire artwork. Which, by the way, I would love to have Colden. It looks fucking fantastic. Look what I've won. I love how much he's hugging. When you have it golden, he hugs the fuck out of that thing. Which I think is really wholesome. No fun. Okay. Ah, <sighs> feels nice. We're like one at this point. They've fully run out of gas. And that's what I like about like this deck can kinda just like naturally beat Um aggro in such an efficient way that's so nice. Like it, it was able to beat full power discard warlock. Um so obviously that makes sense. But man, is it it's just nice, you know. Okay, fair enough. A shame to do that for your wicked knife, though. There he is. I'm gonna exclusively fuck that with trial by fire. Never bring a sword to a fish fight. Or do we? Face the darkness. Let's draw. We'll see what we get. Dirty rat. Seems nice. Ooh. Not good for them. We can now Odin into a lot of value. Uh, they can destroy our minion, but it would cost their weapon and their minion. They're really just not winning this game, sadly. That is arguably a worse play. I just feel bad at this point. Like, they're really playing it out, but there's nothing to play out. Um. Amuse me with your tales of Stylish Face the Honestly, I'll just let them summon minions. It makes my Dry Whisker stronger, so I can just end this game and make them like, end their suffering early. Like, I feel bad. I do want to get to uh, Legend, though, at some point. Like, it's still pretty early, so it's not like, oh man, I really need to get to Legend. But, um, yeah. When you have things to do, you have things to do. Well played, though, well played. I. I respect your willingness to continue. Not many people would continue in a matchup like this. So I respect it. But yeah, we might just give it a few more games and then uh, we'll end on our credits. We have another thrall. We have shield shatter. I honestly full mulligan for um buckler. Pick up. Legit dying. We have turned our curse into huh. our strength. 
Oh no, there it is. They have the golden hero, but we have the golden gen. Golgan. What's more powerful? Golden gen? Probably golden hero. Because uh, that means you've actually like put dedication into that class. I've seen so many people who were like... There was a thing on like a uh, Reddit that was like... Uh, they were 499 wins with Lich King and also... Like, um... It was just like one of those things where it's like... Man, I really don't want to jinx it. Uh, cause like, literally, it was like, two steps away from, one, getting to Legend. Like, if they won a single game, they got to Legend, and they got 500 wins on Lich King. Which, that is beyond amazing. Like, man, the people who grind out classes when they just come out, they truly are, like, amazing. Because, like, it does, it take that takes the dedication to do. Hmm. I think we wait a bit. For sure, with that draw. Because the thing is, we just want to be able to like really crush a lot of minions. The problem with a uh, Totem Shaman, and it's the same thing with Odd Paladin, is when you kill a bunch of the cards, it really doesn't feel impactful because of the fact that um, they're just summoning more shit. But uh, against an anchored uh, totem, that's just good shit to do. Oh, and an ancient. And a hero power. Oh, damn. Because at this point, like, that's their entire board that's now just nuked. And that's like a massive tempo shift, right? We do have Odin in hand naturally, which is really good. Um, I think we Craftsman, Hammer, Hero Power, but we could potentially not as well. I would like to Craftsman on 7. Um, so what we could do here is we could ETC. Ooh, but actually killing that Flame Tongue is also really nice right now. Uh, mm, mm. Okay. Clear that. If they summon another Giga Totem, uh, we can just Galavar it. And that would basically end all of the threats of his deck. But yeah, next turn, Captain Galavar. Almost all the time. We won't do it this time. That was really good that we drew that because, like, it doesn't matter because if they get the battle cry, they get the battle cry. It would be nice to stop that, but, you know, it doesn't matter. But uh, just being able to have a 2 and a 4 on turn 6 is really nice. Um, I don't know. Yeah, there we go, Devolve. That's what I really wanted to bait out. So I'm happy that I was able to do that. Because now that I knew, like, it's fucking Shaman. They're going to have a fucking Devolve. Uh, but being able to, like, just get that out of the way and then just be able to Captain Galavar is so nice for us. Just, like, tempo-wise, that's, like, game-winning. I don't see them coming back from this. Anchor Totem. Okay. Taunt. And then Health, unfortunate. Because the unfortunate thing is that I'm summoning our boy. So I could just kill that, kill this. And then like, what what follow-up do you have that beats this? There's surely like no top deck in the world that beats this. Yeah. So unfortunate. But I guess we're winning, so why am I complaining? Who 
we'll give Odin the win. Yeah, I think maybe one more, one more game. Just because I feel like the games have been really short because we crushed the aggro decks. I do want to maybe get a combo deck in, but yeah. On to the next game. So, the deck. I think, honestly, as always, this is a pretty good control deck that has a lot of tools to be easily be able to crush aggro. If you are facing a lot of aggro decks, then easily this can be a really good option for you. It hard loses to Kingsbane. Uh, and maybe some other strategies as well, because obviously it's, uh, like, it does have Smothering Starfish, which was more of a Jailer hit. Uh, like, a thing you use literally just to hit Jailer. Uh, it does probably lose against Warlock, because you probably get your Odin milled. Um, and maybe Shudderwalk as well. Things like that are probably going to be able to beat this deck. Also, Infinite Turn Mage probably, eas probably can just beat up this deck as well. But yeah, overall, I think it's a very strong deck. It has a lot of good tools, but it is a bit more on the expensive side. So that might be a thing that detracts you from playing this deck, which is unfortunate. Obviously, ETC you can get for free, but everything else you can't, which really does suck. Uh, there's also a lot of epics involved with the Trial by Fire, which you don't massively need, but it's highly recommended. Frozen Buckler you need. You have to level up to get Bladestorm. Uh, but other than that, you know, that you have like maybe two to three legendary, uh, well, three legendaries minimum, pretty much, uh, going into five. Like, it's a very expensive deck, but I do think actually really, really good. Not tier one. I think this is actually a tier two deck, even if they make the hammer the, the way it was before. I think, honestly, like, Warrior, like, this deck would still be tier two. Uh, it just loses to, a, like, all of Druid, essentially, as well. Uh, it loses to Kingsbane, it loses to Shadowwalk, it loses to basically any, like, endgame strategy, which is ironic, considering the fact that it's a control deck, and it's kind of trying to counter that. But yeah, hope you have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.